Just some closing thoughts on uh, these last couple of days of analyses that I've done for matches. I don't want y'all to get, for you new guys, I don't want y'all to come and, of course, you veterans chime in on what you think about what I'm about to say. Let's, let's broaden this conversation. But you guys, I don't want you to think about these steps like the end-all, be-all. Like you have to stick to this structure of establish, shine, cut off, heat, hope, falses, home. You don't really have to follow that, but they're, they're just a... They're just a framework that's being laid over a certain swing that the match is supposed to follow, right? So the, the momentum of the match is going to be like somebody comes out, the, you know, the wrestlers come out, tag, singles, whatever the fuck the factions are. One guy, two guys, three guys, however many people or gals. And somebody establishes themselves as the favorite, right? And somebody establishes, establishes themselves as the not favorite that everybody's supposed to... Somebody goes with the crowd and somebody goes against the crowd. But let's just say for the sake of time, you skip that. Or let's say some political bullshit gets in there and it's like... It's not face heel. It's more like veteran is going to take the lead and the newer person is going to follow, you know? Whatever the case is, somebody's going to about to take the lead. And when you're doing the shine... When somebody's about to take the lead, that's when you can start doing cutoffs where one person goes for it, the other person cuts them off, and then they go for theirs, and then maybe when they're going for theirs, the other person, and it's just these cutoffs create this illusion of a struggle, right, and a fight. And in the beginning, when you're doing the cutoffs and the shine, before the shine gets established, you can do foreshadowing. You can do going for the finisher, or going for your preludes, or going for bigger moves you're going to go on later in the match. You establish those during the establishment of the shine, and then you establish the shine. Right, you could do it from the shine into the cutoff, even where the guy's got the shine and the the the, the heels trying to come back, or maybe not the heel, but the, the the lower person, the person that's gonna establish the heat later. They're trying to get ahead, and and you foreshadow there. But at some point, either before or, or immediately after the sh or during the shine, before the cutoff, there's some foreshadowing going on, which that's huge. I recommend 100% you do the foreshadowing, and then you hit the shine. You hit the shine, and then after the shine comes the cutoff. The heel or the lower person, the person that's going to try to, like, make, create doubt that the person that took the lead is about to, can win. When that person cuts them off and takes over and takes the heat, um, it's going to slow down there, okay? Once it slows down there, um, you can really start doing... Remember, you slow it down because the crowd gets all pumped up in the beginning because it's new wrestlers coming out and they're like, oh, the guy that I want to win is going to win and they get all excited. And then you do that. You cut them off. That's why it's called the cutoff. You cut the crowd off where you cut off their excitement that the guy they, that they expect to win, it doesn't even necessarily have to be the face. It could just be the guy that looks stronger, right? If it's a big guy, little guy match, the big guy is taking the lead and then the little guy cuts him off. Whatever it is, it could be intergender, it could be heavy lights, it could, whatever it's going to be. Whoever's taking the lead is making the crowd think they're going to win. So then the person that the crowd doesn't think is going to win cuts the person that they think is going to win off. So basically kind of like the underdog cuts off the favorite, let's say, to just for simplistic terms. So the favorite gets cut off by the underdog. When the underdog cuts off the favorite... Then the underdog can start, you know, if he's a heel, he can start taunting the crowd and he can start throwing in theatrics there. That's when I would do it, at least. You did some foreshadowing, foreshadowing before, during, or at some point before the cutoff. You did some foreshadowing, so the crowd got a little excited. You slow them down. You, you excited them with foreshadowing, shine, some moves, some good wrestling that they came to see. You excite them, and then you cut it off, right? The underdog cuts it off and slows it down. You do holds, you do heat. You go out of the ring and you go into the crowd, whatever you do, slower moves. And the crowd starts kind of calming down and they're like, this is when you want to get the crowd to react, but not to the match. You want the crowd to react to the face or whoever is the favorite, isn't whoever they thought was going to win, isn't going to win now. Now the other guy might win. And you're, you're like playing with the crowd or you're like, screw you. Or you're like, whatever, right? Like you're just communicating with the crowd because the matches slow down to the point at this point during the heat where you can interact with the crowd then after that's starting to happen 
right? I'm probably going to do, I know I said I was going to do Guerrero Mysterio next, but after I do that, I'm definitely going to do Bret Hart and Stone Cold Submission Match WrestleMania 13. That is, from what I remember, that match is perfect for what I'm talking about. It, it shows it perfectly. So you start building the crowd back up during the heat. You do some theatrics, and then the hopes come. The hopes come in. The person that you thought was originally going to win and got cut off, and now you're thinking maybe this other person's going to win, maybe they won't win. That person starts coming back, and you're like, oh, yeah, I thought they were going to win anyway. Maybe they will win, just like I originally thought. Again, foreshadowing. And then they start coming back, and they either might do a bunch of a bunch of moves. Like it's going to be a spot, probably, and then the, the person that's doing the hope is going to do a reversal during the hope and start taking the lead, but then at some point... The, the underdog, the heel, or whoever is, you know, took the lead second is going to cut that person off again. And this might be a fight. This, there might be a bunch of cutoffs. There might be a bunch of moves. It might be very extended. But eventually, at some point, the person who has the heat is going to take back over and cut the hopes off. So after that happens, and you know, that other cutoff happens, they go back into the heat again. They don't get, quite get out of it. After this, we can expect the match to start picking up. There's probably going to be some in-between, like where they're both jockeying for position. There's going to be a double down, possibly, or maybe the hit face or whatever's going to happen. There's eventually going to be another double down, right? There's going to be a little bit of boost of energy where we re-enter the heat and then it gets cut off again. There's a double down. And then now we're going to have the false comeback after the double down. Or maybe you don't even have a double down, but you start going into the false comeback. You re-enter the heat. And then you enter the false comeback. It's not a hope. It's different than the hope in that the, the counts are faster. The moves are bigger. The tempo is quicker. Like you really think it's going to finish. And you can tell this by the speed of the match. You'll see as I keep continuing to break matches down for you guys. That's how I'm going to determine when we're in the falses as opposed to the hope. You know, it's going to be the tempo. So after we re-enter the heat, there's going to be another cutoff or another jockeying or a double down or whatever the fuck happens, right? Some... Some wrestling is going to happen, and then we're going to start going into the false comeback or just the falses. If it's the false comeback, the face is going to take the lead and start hitting a bunch of moves in sequence, and then he's going to hit big moves. It's going to be a, a, a two and a half or longer counts. We're going to get into the longer counts. The counts are going to be faster paced by from the referee. The referee's going to pick up his pace with the count, and it's going to be the face maybe leading if it's the face doing his false comeback, or maybe it's just going to be back and forth. They hit a move. One hits a move, then another hits a move, then another And it's big moves. It's moves that could finish the match. And if you want to, you could finish the match here. Especially if you have a shorter match to go. You just hit a move out of nowhere, and you finish the match. But say you're going through the traditional steps. You go into the falses here, back and forth, or maybe an extended false comeback. And then the heel cuts them off, and it goes into extended heel, finishing the face now, cutting him off. But it's falses. And then we go into another double down, or maybe not a double down, but just another cutoff where it ends It ends in the home. Or basically at some point, somehow these false finishes are going to end, and we're going to go into the home spot, where actual legitimate moves, where the somebody's going to win. Typically, it's finishers. Typically, it's like the guys start hitting their finishers, and they either finish each other. If it's a straight comeback, it'll be like falses, and then there'll be a double down, and then the face will fucking spin surge back up hit his comeback the heel will be trying to fight it and the face will keep cutting him off not letting him get it and then he'll hit his big finisher move and they'll go home and that'll be it but if it's not uh like that if it's a bigger match where there's a swerve in there which i like swerves swerves are a part of my model then you're gonna make it look like it's about to end you're about to make it look like it's uh finishers but then the finisher doesn't get the job done. Or, you know, maybe it looks like a finisher or it is a finisher, but the finisher doesn't get the job done. And now we're going, you have to get back to the finisher. It's about getting back to the finisher. And if you have more than one finisher, well, then you just go to your next finisher. But it's about getting to the next finisher. And it's about the finishes now. It's not about hidden moves and then going for the pin like in the, in the falses. And no, it's about hidden moves and then leading into a finish, leading into your finishing move. And you hit that and then you go home. And then th that's where it becomes like this drama of like, how are they going to finish it? Like, is it going to be the finisher? Is there going to be some other move? And then you're going to make the finisher inescapable. So if it's a submission hold, the guy's going to keep trying to get out of it. And you're going to keep getting him back in it. If it's a big move, like a, a DDT of some type or a slam of some type or whatever your finisher is, you know, an F5, 
You're going to hit it multiple times. You're going to hit it. The guy's going to kick out. You're going to work back into it. The guy might fight it. You hit him with it again. You hit him with it again. And it's just like, it's about the finisher now when you're in the home spot. If, if there's been a swerve, right? So I'm, of course, going to, I have my longer seven steps video where I really get into the seven steps. But that's a quick breakdown there. I'm super pumped. I just did all these matches over these last couple of days. So here's a basic, quick seven steps mini outline here i'll give the longer one later on but make sure that for you up and comers and of course for you pros chime in and tell me what your experiences have been uh, the more breakdowns I'm, uh, i do and especially when i start doing uh, promo breakdowns i'm going to start inserting what i would do and talking through how i'm thinking in that point right which is going to help y'all your new guys i'm trying to teach you how to think wrestling i'm trying to teach you how to think like a professional wrestler like a worker so that take all this is not as me telling you how it works. It's me presenting ways of thought to you so you can start thinking about it and the moves that you insert. So like I'm thinking, oh, I'm in the shine. I'm going to do these moves. Oh, I'm in the cutoff. I'm going to cut them off like this. I'm the heel, so I should do this move. I'm in the heat now. And, and this is the tempo of the match. And these are the moves that I should put here. And it gets a lot bigger depending on the card you're like i can't do these matches because later in the card they're going to do these or whatever but you can really start to brand yourself when you know in this part of the match i'm going to hit these moves and people can expect these moves from me and the way that i do them and once you really get to that point where you can brand yourself and there are certain moves that belong to you man it's it's just we're getting into some it's not even that advanced but we're getting more into just to what actual wrestling and building yourself as a character as a character and just we're really getting to what wrestling is but before i go too long i don't want to make this video too long i've probably been talking for like 10 minutes now i'll see you guys in the next video i have another breakdown coming down in a few days i'm gonna i'm gonna start working on my other channels that i have and focusing on that but leave me some feedback i'll see if i can make some community posts or whatever i want feedback from you guys i want to know what you all are thinking thanks for watching Make sure you give me some support, some like and subscribe, whatever the fuck. But let me know that you're engaging with me somehow and I will be back with more videos. You guys take care, all right?